This is a tiny whiny little fan, and this is another tiny whiny little fan, but on Ozempic. These here are Arctic's P8 Slim and P8 Silent, and after getting an infuriating amount of comments regarding this, we will now be covering 80mm fans too. Just not as extensively, so no radiator benchmarks, because I, I frankly I just don't have a radiator for that. This is going to be case simulator only, but regardless of that, because this here is going to be the very first 80mm fan video, we are not going to cover a single one, because we need to compare it to something, but we are going to make this into a A versus B thing. If you've got some sort of PC case that somehow has a 80mm only fan spot, and you are debating if you should go slim or silent, well, if you're one of these three people alive, this video is for you. As a whole, there are a number of Arctic P8s in existence, which shouldn't be confused. We've got the P8 PWM PST, the PWM controlled daisy chainable one, which unfortunately isn't in or wasn't in stock back when I started this. So uh, yeah, that's the reason why we are not starting with this one. Then we got the P8 Slim PWM PST, one of the contestants for today, also PWM controlled and daisy chainable. Then we got the P8 Silent, the other contestant and basically a slower spinning version of the P8 PWM PST. And then there is the usual CO version or constant operation where Arctic basically just replaces the fluid dynamic bearing with a dual ball one to, you know, make it outlive me. And then there is the P8 Max, which is just a regular P8 on steroids, and you will never guess which one is due for the next episode. Anyway, today it's Slim versus Silent, and out of all the P8 fans that do exist, the Silent one is the only model that doesn't have to be distinguished by the sticker on the back, where all the other P8s look like miniature P12s, so 25mm thick and 5 heavily bent wings, basically the iconic Arctic P12 fan, just like P8. The P8 Slim is very different. The hub in the center might be identical, but going outwards from there we got 9 almost not bent at all wings, and the thing is just 50mm thick, which for a 120mm fan might not be such a destructive property, but at this point we, like, we don't have that much fan left. Now, ignoring the obvious blade and thickness difference, the rest of the two fans is pretty much identical. We got the same type of frame that we know from the P12, a few grooves here and there, some bars for additional reinforcements, a 400mm long cable. For the silent one, it's just ending with the 3-pin voltage control plug, whilst the slim got the PWM plug with the daisy chainable option. Keep that in mind in case you want to install multiple of these in a row, like this here, you can just daisy chain the hell out of it. These here, you need to split up. And both fans come in the usual Arctic type of box containing the fans and the bag of screws. Just like tiny screws, because the holes are also slightly tiny. It's, it's a cute screws. But before we get to the actual performance that was recorded, let's have a look at the stats. Just as a heads up, the smaller the fan becomes, the wilder the difference in stats. And for today, it's still manageable, but wait until we open the next few boxes. The P8 Silent can spin it up to 1600 RPM, so good so far, and it can push up to 15.6 CFM and up to 0.62 mm of H2O. The P8 Slim, on the other hand, that one can spin up to 3000 RPM, deliver up to 22.5 CFM and up to 2.35 millimeters of H2O. So these two are very, very, very different fans and we can measure that. Thankfully, the place that keeps making me happy to be there and spent way too much money for that matter, but they had some MDF left and a few holes later and we got 80 millimeter fan adapters for the PCK simulator. And with that, here we go. To get going, we allow both fans to spin at max and measure the performance by observing the package temperature of the CPU underneath a passive Nokia P1. Basically, we just measure how quickly the air within the box gets recycled. And as you might have guessed by the stats, just because the Slim is hooked on Ozempic doesn't mean its 3000 RPM speed can kick you over. Whilst the P8 Silent kept the chip at 56.6 degrees C above ambient, the P8 Slim pushed that number down to 48.3 degrees C above ambient. An 8.3 degrees C difference, a huge difference for this benchmark machine. And just because I am myself, back when I built the case simulator, I did it with the intent to mix match different sized fans. Mostly that was actually for 120s versus 140s, because most cases allow mix match. But the machine and the settings, everything is exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the plate that I use to mount the fans on. Thus, even if it's really freaking stupid, we can put them on the big shot. Again here, please, if you've got a 120mm fan spot, Take a 120mm fan. Do not use these if you don't have to. Please just don't. Anyway, it's pretty much what you would expect for the form factor. The P8 silent marks the last spot, very foreseeable, but the 3000 RPM P8 Slim 
isn't taking the second last. No, it actually outperformed two fans. The Coolify Holo, that's the hologram fan which had like a bunch of poles blocking half its Impala, so that's kind of okay. And the Chief Tronic Nova, which I don't even remember why, but I remember that these were like notoriously bad for some reason. Anyway, take the big ref as a bit of a joke, but it does have to put things into perspective. At 180 versus 120 or 140, there will be a significant loss in performance. From 110 to 140, it really depends on the fan, but from 80 to 120, the like like which is like close to half the fan the the difference is enormous for our noise to performance graphs we did have to switch things up a bit because a smaller fan creates less noise sometimes we will get to that uh, in a later episode but for all the 80 millimeter fans today and the ones that will follow they basically all ran at noise floor so what i did is lower the distance between the fan and the db meter down to 30 centimeters which is also why we cannot noise normalize any regular 120 140 fan and an 80 millimeter fan. And the noise to performance graphs for 80 will be 180 millimeter fan exclusive, which is already unfortunate, but double unfortunately, I still ran into a wall. Because this might look like I forgot to add half the values, but actually no, the P8 silence still runs at noise floor constantly. The P8 slim on the other hand, it might stop relatively loud at 42 dB at 30 centimeters. Again, 30 centimeters, that's like, really really close feel free to check out one of these calculators to see how the loudness of things behaves with distance anyway it might start off loud but gradually moves towards noise floor where it actually hits noise floor before the p8 silent even starts. and even if i wasn't able to create a somewhat usable noise to performance curve for the p8 silent the conclusion is still pretty obvious i think if you've got to choose between a p8 slim and a p8 silent take the slim not only do you have so much more headroom but you can also make it spin significantly slower and still end up with a slightly better result. So that's settled. I am not sure who in the world would stand before this decision. This is a very, very niche decision right here. But there you go. Price-wise, these two are pretty similar. The Slim goes for around seven bucks right now and the Silent can be bought for just a few cents more. But funnily enough, if you take a five pack of these, it will bring down the per piece price to just below four euros, which, yeah, okay, now it's kind of complicated, but yeah, no, take, take the Slim. If you need to take one of those, take the Slim and make it spin slower. But okay, I think this is going to be it for today. At this point, a huge thank you to Arctic for sending these over. And for you, we still got a few models ready to be added to the graphs. There are two more Arctics, two more Noctuas, and one of the Arctics is like, that's a different kind of fan, but we will get to that. Once more of these videos will get out in the future, we are going to get a bigger picture of which 80mm fan is worth trying out. And based on the views on these videos, I will see if I will reach out to more manufacturers regarding these 80mm fans. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get this poor fella into treatment. He, he's really slim enough. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to keep going, have a look at the Nokia NF812X25G2 video I just released. Very, very, very different fan, different form factor, but this was the first 80mm video I released, and I just didn't know what else to tell you. Anyway, thank you for watching, hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.